Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, it feels like it's been a while since I've said this, we're going to do something a little different because I haven't done a great deal of building tutorials in this series yet and to be honest, I find it quite difficult to do building tutorials, often because the stuff that I'm building isn't going to be for everybody. Not everyone's going to want to build in the same style, not everybody's going to want to build the same structure, some people want a block by block tutorial some people want a little bit more of like inspiration for their builds rather than a straightforward place this block here then place this block here so doing build tutorials I find is a bit of a mixed bag but today I've settled on a technique that I think is going to be an interesting challenge for everyone and is potentially going to change the way you look at building. You may have seen other people do this before, but if it's your first time doing this, it's going to be a bit of fun, and I think it's worth giving this a try as an exercise. It's also really going to help me, because right now I'm working on a build for my Empire's SMP series, the other series that I'm doing at the time of this recording, at least, who knows, people might be watching these in the future, but Empire Season 2 is in full swing, and I need to get some building done over there. And it's the kind of thing that I'm not too worried about over here in Survival Guide, because I'm not building anything with a central theme the way I am on empires. But the technique we're going to look at today can potentially be used to build something different in both empires and here in the survival guide. So we're going to dip out to a creative test world and give this a try and then we're going to make one build here in survival guide, another build on empires with the same footprint but a different color palette. And that's because we're going to start off making an entire build just using one block. And of course we're going to be doing that here in my creative flat world where I've had a bunch of experiments, a bunch of thumbnail setups and all kinds of redstone bits and pieces that we've done in previous episodes. This place is on Honestly, a little bit of a mess. I really wish it was more organized, but we're going to go out to a nice open flat space here and we're going to start building the footprint for what on Empires is going to be a museum, but on Survival Guide could be a mansion house, just could be some kind of decorative home out in the countryside somewhere. It's going to look a little bit formal, but it's going to have some really nice touches. And I've kind of been working on the design of this already, but I want to take you through the process because once I settled on this process, I decided this was going to be a really interesting way of looking at building. So we're going to take stone blocks, but we're not just going to limit ourselves to stone blocks, we're going to stick to one category of material, but of course slabs and stairs are fairly important for shaping stuff. So we're going to go to search, we're going to type in stone with just one E, thank you, and then we're going to grab a bunch of the slabs and we're going to grab the stairs from wherever stone stairs are, there they go. The whole purpose of this challenge is to completely ignore texture and to focus on giving your house whatever build you're trying to do a good shape because if it has a good shape if the shapes are recognizable without any texture then you can add some texture in later and more often than not that's going to add to the character of the build while keeping the overall shape very coherent and it saves you getting kind of block spammy while you're building it and then realizing later that the whole thing looks like a mess if you start with a good foundation the rest of it is going to fall in line. So because this is a museum, one of the things I want to do is have a couple of different layered types of steps going up to the main entrance. We're going to lay down a stone platform here because I want this to be a seven block wide section here with slab stairs like so. So it just goes up half a block each time you walk up the steps. But then I want a section that starts from the same place but has a steeper incline. So we're going to do a seven block wide set of stairs here, some stone across the back of those. We're going to have another set of stairs immediately following that and then a two block wide stone platform there. Then we're going to repeat the same slab staircase on the opposite side so that this whole thing is sort of symmetrical. And we're going to be working with symmetry for this build, but you can just as easily do this with asymmetrical builds as well. Now, because what we're building here is a museum, we want it to have that really classical Greek or Roman looking entrance. So it's going to have four sets of columns along the front here. We're going to add those probably till about five blocks high. And then we're going to build what's called a pediment. This is the name for that triangular awning kind of thing, the triangular roof gable that you find on classical Greek builds, things like the Parthenon and everything. We don't want this to appear too steep though, so having it go up to a full block point up there is going to look a little bit extreme. We kind of want to have a slab there, I think, just to decrease the pitch of the roof. And on the inside here, we're going to add a few little details to frame this out, to make it look like the whole thing is more supported, and to give a sort of triangular but slightly differently shaped central part there. 
I also think that this looks a little awkward sat on top of these pillars like this. We're going to have it come down at the edges by one slab like so. And I think that's a good shape for our pediment at the front of this structure. We want to extend this platform a little bit at the back here. It's going to lead up to the front wall of the structure. It's also going to lead up to an entrance directly behind our columns here. I think we're going to have another set of columns directly behind these ones so that the roof looks like it's supported all the way back to the main structure. And then we're going to bring the columns in by one block here. So we're probably going to have another piece there just to look like supports, but then we're going to have a couple of columns here framing out the entrance to our build. And now each of the blocks surrounding the pediment here on the roof, we're going to bring those back so that they would meet the front wall of the build. It doesn't matter quite how long we make these right now because we're going to have those cut off by the front of the structure in a minute, so we're just going to bring all of these back. On the inside here, we can put some other kind of material to really have it stand out. I'm thinking maybe calcite or something like that, but for now we're just going to lay that in with stone because once again, we're not worried about texture yet we're just worried about shape and I think that is a pretty striking shape already. You can pretty much identify what this is even though we've only really used one block to do it. Well one block and one slab but it all looks like one connected piece of material and yet you can pretty easily identify that this is the front of a formal structure that uses some Greek classical architecture. Now I'm going to build up the walls, and we're going to do that in 7x7 seven seven sections, starting right here behind this pillar. So already that's connecting to the roof, giving the building a front wall for it to connect to, and we're going to come out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more blocks, because we'd already placed 2 right there. And so this section of wall is actually going to end a block before our slab staircase that comes up to meet it. Which, now that I'm looking at it, this gap here seems kind of broad, so what I might actually do is bring the wall up to it there, and then bring this whole slab staircase in one more block so that the first slab lines up with this supporting block here and the stairs stick out by one more block. And of course, the beauty of this building method is that we're not having to move all of the texture when we do that. We're not having to remember where all of the blocks go or copy them over one at a time when we move that stuff back because it's all just one type of material right now. We're getting the shape down first. So given that we're now building this wall in seven block sections, I want to start another section of wall one block behind that. Once again, giving a little bit more depth to each of these walls. Unlike the stuff we've already built, this isn't going to have steps leading up to it because these are just going to be side walls, there won't be any access, so we can close off the staircase there. And the wall is just going to turn 90 degrees and we'll build another six blocks along here because that's going to make a seven block long wall along the side as well. Of course, we can just mirror exactly the same thing on the opposite side. So now when we look at this from the outside, we've got a pretty decent facade of a stately building. And we could even start figuring out where the windows are going to go. We probably want them in the center of this wall, we'll count three blocks in. We could have a slit window like that, or we could have a 3x3 three three window. We do kind of need to pay attention to where the floor inside is going to be. So if we walk up inside the building on this level, the floor is probably going to continue at that height, meaning that it's going to hit the window about there. So we probably actually want there to be a full block in between the player's feet and the window here, because most windows don't go all the way down to the ground except in more modern buildings, and it feels like this building might want a bit more privacy than that. You can stand at this window and look outwards, because it's at roughly waist height the window begins, but from ground level outside the window seems a little bit higher, because we're two blocks further down, so it's going to give this window a bit of a more private feel. We can also get an impression of how tall the walls need to be to make sure that this window has space for a frame around it and stuff, which means that the walls of the rest of the structure need to come up to match. We can maybe put some stairs in as a bit of an ornamental detail, kind of show off that this is a window for the time being, and we'll do an identical window on the opposite side here, once again for symmetry. At this point I want to shape out the rest of this initial ground floor, and I think we're going to continue with seven block wide sections, we're going to have one here, and because we're only working with one type of material here we need to work a little bit more with shape, so I pushed this out by one block to give it a little bit more of a defined shape and to really help carve the build into 7x7 seven seven sections. We'll drop back in by one more block to make another 7 block wide section here. That's where the back wall of the building will start. And we're going to have this mirror the front of the building, with this section recessed, this section extruded, the middle section here recessed, and this is only going to be 5 blocks wide, because remember we started that wall over there one block into the central area with the column. So to have it line up with the front of the build, it goes 77577, seven, 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 and then we turn a corner and complete this last wall of the build here. So now our building not only has a formal front facade, it's also got a footprint, a floor plan. We've got 
our entire room in here sketched out, and it could just be one large room in the case of it being a museum, or it could be a series of smaller rooms if we want to treat this more like a mansion build. But while right now the shape has its ins and outs, it's actually relatively simple. There's not too much difference between this and a standard stone box, with the exception that this one has a few sections pushed out and pulled back. The fact that we worked on the entrance first really helps sell the rest of the shape, but to be honest, this already looks way more interesting than an average house build. And it's about to get much more interesting than this because we are going to add a second floor. I want there to be supports on either side using stone stairs in this case, but still sticking with stone. And we're going to have seven block wide sections here as well. And we're going to do that with basically every wall. This one here is going to be supported in the center instead of being supported on the sides because it's got the roof here already. So that's going to be supporting it on one side. And I kind of like space these stairs out every so often. This is also lined up with the center of this wall, so if we put a window in the center there, it's going to be directly under this. But we're going to create these second floor walls on every single side of the structure. And why are we doing this? Because it creates an interesting shape. It prevents the second floor from just being another continuation of this straight wall. Not only that, but pulling these blocks out a little bit creates some shadows, both on the blocks immediately below them and on the underside of the blocks themselves. As we bring these walls up, we are thinking about what shape the roof is going to be and how the walls are going to support it. And typically in the real world, roofs are made with a pitch or a slope. And the reason for that, of course, is that it's going to rain at some point and the water has to run off the roof. But generally speaking, in order to support a sloped roof, the walls in the middle are going to be higher and the walls towards the outside are going to be lower. At this point, we haven't quite decided what we're doing with this five block section of wall right here over the roof. We do want this to come out by one more block because once again that creates a little bit of depth and I think what we're going to do is create something a little bit like this where there's going to be a background material and a kind of arch over the top of it. So we're going to bring stairs in once again. We're going to have some stone on either side there, probably one more there, and we're going to create the ridge of a central roof like so. To make this feel a bit more like an arch, we're going to have a stone slab there, makes the whole thing a little bit more shallow, and we could potentially have some stone slabs either side here like that. Yeah, that feels like a little bit more of a gentle curve to me. And we could put some sort of detail block in there already. We could put prismarine or copper or something like that back there. But once again, we are doing this entirely based on shape, and this is shaping up pretty well. The one thing I'm noticing flying around this right now is that the stair texture blends in a little bit with the stone texture behind it. So just to make sure those stand out, we're going to break our rules a little bit, and we're going to use stone bricks. We're going to bring those in here because they will stand out from the stone and the structural elements of the build are still going to be visible while we're flying around looking at it from above. So that's a little bit of a cheat, but it's still technically stone, and we could swap those out for other materials later. We're not worried about the texture so much, it's just important to see the elements of the build when we're judging what it's going to look like from all angles. Now we know roughly the height of these walls, we're actually going to bring each of the walls around the outside up to meet them in these individual sections. All of the walls around this side are going to be supporting the same roof, so they're going to be roughly the same height, whereas this wall here is going to be supporting the roof that's directly opposite. So that's going to be up a few more blocks. This five block wide section at the back we're not going to worry about because we're just going to connect that to the front. This roof is probably going to come straight across. So now our building looks like this. It's getting beefy. I like it. I think it's coming together very, very well. On the inside, it's got some pretty tall walls. You can imagine there being two floors to this place. You could put bedrooms upstairs. It can be a museum. It can be a manor house. It can be a whole variety of things. But now we come to the problem of the roof, and I've always hated building roofs in Minecraft. It's always a little bit tricky deciding what kind of roof to build on a structure like this. It's a more modern feeling build if we're going to be using it as a museum or a manor house, but it's got these Greek columns out the front. It's got this kind of maybe space for a coat of arms or something up there. We want the roof to look stately, so just doing an ordinary pitched roof really isn't going to cut the mustard, and each of the sections of the build is divided up in such a way that you could do several different pitches of roof if you wanted to. Like, for example, this roof could come up and be pitched like this, so that it would slope downward like that, and then you could have this one pitched up to match. And using slabs here, we can kind of sketch out an idea of the roof line, but does that look right for this build? That kind of feels more like a suburban home than it does this kind of mansion or museum style build. This is really the point at which a bit of research was going to come in handy. So that's when I went to Google image search and I searched for types of roofs, and then a lot of stuff comes up. 
So I go back to the source of my inspiration for my Empire series, and I load up Elden Ring, looking for the capital Lanedale, which is kind of the cheap architectural inspiration of my builds on Empires, and I fast travel to the central part of the capital, and then realize that this is the save where I've completed the game and <laughs> not started my second playthrough yet, and so the entire capital has become completely drowned in ash at this point. But luckily a couple of the buildings have survived, and the ones that have, have some pretty awesome looking roofs. And so finally I find the kind of roof that I'm after, the kind of thing that I think is going to inspire this build, and it's this roof over here, or there's one over there as well, but this one is slightly closer and easier for me to look at. Naturally, there's a ton of detail packed into these on the scale that we can't really replicate in Minecraft, but most of them are all made out of the same color material, so it kind of goes along with the style that we've been working with here, and the rooftop here has a few different dormers, it's shaped a really specific way, and it's got this very classical feeling style. But then I do a bit of digging and I find out these are called mansard roofs, and immediately these these things are perfect. You can find examples of them in classical looking buildings, in more contemporary architecture. There's a whole bunch of different types of mansard roofs that will give us a variety of styles that we can play around with at the scale that we've got. And while they're typically constructed with a very steep pitch and then a very shallow pitch towards the top, it leaves room for a bunch of ornamentation, which is kind of typical of more gothic architecture and the kind of stuff I'm going with being heavily inspired by the capital city in Elden Ring. With a little bit of awkward parkour, I can even get up onto these rooftops and take a look around at some of the other examples, where a lot of them have flatter rooftops in the center. There's even an item here that I ended up missing. <laughs> but we get a couple of good angles. We can take a look at the roof ornaments. We can take a look at the dormers. This seems like a roof with a lot of really interesting shape to it. Much more interesting than just doing a straightforward angled roof. So we're going to take this back to creative and give it a try. And so armed with the knowledge that mansard roofs are a thing, we can return to Minecraft and use this knowledge to our advantage. Now we're probably going to try making a concave roof. So we're going to start with some stairs here and probably a follow-up line of stairs immediately behind that. We are going to have to make sure we leave room for the stairs to hit this side of the wall as well. And if we want to, we could leave roof ornaments on the corners or we could have the corners connect like this. I think I'm going to leave it that way for now. But from there, the roof pitch becomes a little steeper and we can basically put a full block in there. But one of the most important features of this roof is the roof dormer. It's really got to stick out a little bit here and we've got to have enough height in the roof to allow for effectively a window in here and it can be a one block high window if it doesn't really make sense to have the roof be any steeper than this so I'm thinking that's what we'll start with we'll go with something like this we'll put a solid block above there and that at least looks like a dormer window we also need some kind of lip on the edge of the roof another kind of overhang and so we're going to grab our stone brick stairs maybe fill those in with stone slabs or maybe even use stone brick slabs just to make sure that that feels like a separate element because once again the stone slabs are going to blend in a little bit too much so that we can't quite see where we're adding stuff like that but this feels like it slopes inwards has a protruding window which could even come out one more block if we wanted it to but I don't know I like it nestled back in there we'll do the same combination of slabs and stairs on this side as well and we probably even want to put a slab on the corner there as the roof turns a corner if we we want it to that could be where our roof ornament goes we might end up going with that later but since a section of this wall extends outward we want to make sure that the roof extends outward as well we can turn the stairs at this point so that they connect to the wall that sticks out and then we can turn them back in again once we reach the next section of course we want to do the same with the next row of stairs and if we're going to put a dormer window anywhere it's probably going to have to be here because this section is only going to be three blocks wide otherwise but that'll connect along the line of the roof just fine and we could even put some more windows in let's say three blocks in from the end so we want one here once we filled in this section of the roof we'll add another dormer window here and this window at the back here is going to have to line up with the one on the front it's coming together very well it's got the right sort of shape to it we just need to figure out how to cap this off and we're going to do that once again with some stairs on either side here those can wrap around on top of this block and they actually connect to the stairs that we're using for the dormer windows and now the ridge of the roof is going to come out using slabs and we can connect that in with all of the areas where the dormer windows have those vacant blocks at the top here. So the topmost pitch of the roof, the shallow part of the mansard roof is going to end 
right there, and we can just fill in all of the remaining blocks with solid stone. Because this next section of roof adjacent to it is going to be higher up. The stairs are probably going to start on this block here, meaning that the next set of stairs is going to go there. We need a full block right there, and then of course the next set of stairs that's going to form the peak of the roof is going to be up here. We go through the same process of creating these roof dormer windows. We'll probably put one in here, make sure that it's two blocks tall, create our roof overhang using stairs and slabs like so, and that's looking like a pretty good shape, but it's got to connect to this one here. So we fill in the blocks there, and to be honest, I don't mind the line of this roof running into the one next door. Even this flat section here is not a huge problem because Look at the roofs in Elden Ring, they had a flat section towards the middle, they didn't need to worry too much about water runoff or anything, and this is going to be a fairly invisible section of the build anyway, because most of the time we'll be viewing it from ground level. You might occasionally fly over it with elytra, but aside from that, we're not going to worry too much about the fact that this part of the roof is fairly flat. The arch of this dormer window is a little high with the stairs there, so we're going to bring that back down. At this point, we can also figure out where these dormer windows are going to be in the roofline of the next section of roof. And I think we're going to have one here in the center, but we're going to bring the other two in by a block. And the second line of our mansard roof comes together just the same as the first one did. I might even bring a couple of these stairs down in between each of these like so, just so this roof section here isn't too boring. On the whole, it's looking pretty good. And now we can do some of the ornamentation stuff. Once again, we're going to break our rules a little bit and we're going to bring in some iron bars because these, while they're still on the grayscale side, are going to help give that kind of latticed ironwork feel that some of the images in the Google image search have. And it's a look that I really like this kind of roof ridge. You could even have some lightning rods in here if you wanted to make sure the build didn't get hit by lightning. But one really cool thing about iron bars and glass panes is that they run right along the edge of the stair blocks, which means they are kind of perfect for looking like roof edge ornamentation. And now if I step back and take a look at this, from the ground especially, it looks like one of those roofs that we've been looking at in our Google image searches. We can start to fill in some of these windows as well with black and grey stained glass. Once again, keeping everything kind of grayscale, but we don't really have anything like glass pane size that's made out of stone, so it's the best thing that we can really do. And once again, even though this whole thing is completely untextured, it's looking pretty good. So we're almost done with the shape of this build, we've just got the middle section to figure out. And while of course it seems a little bit silly to have a lower central section than the roofs around it, I want this roof section to go all the way across to the back here where I've kind of doubled up on this crest style thing that we had at the front of the build. And so I'm probably just going to copy the line of the roof across here, acknowledging that copying the stairs all the way across does leave a gap here which we're going to need to fill in using solid blocks or slabs. Although to be quite honest, I think this needs to connect there and then all these stairs being the opposite way round almost works better for me. <laughs> and of course we'll continue the slabs across from the front here. And if your immediate reaction to this was, what about the realism? What about the water runoff? Well, you can imagine that these are gutters and that they have a very slight incline that allows the water to spill out here. But again, this is Minecraft. We can't be 100% about these things and water isn't really a problem anyway. Now we could call it there. We could say that this is the shape of our house in its entirety, but that roof section in the center does need something a little extra. And so what we're going to do is build a kind of domed tower that's going to rise up from the center of the roof here. It's going to be circular with a three block side and one block diagonal, meaning that it matches up with the roof ridges over here and can connect to the slabs that we've already placed across there. We'll make the whole thing just tall enough that we can add windows on the front and the back sides. But once again, this creates a really interesting shape nestled in the center of all of our roofs. And it's a more simple shape than the mansard roofs on either side of it, which I think works to its advantage. We're going to create some overhangs around each of these windows, probably face two stairs in this way, and we'll create the same overhang on this side even though there isn't technically a window there. And in the middle of here we're going to create a dome. And domes aren't the easiest shapes to draw, but you can kind of get the hang of it after a while. You start by drawing a circle, then we want to draw a square touching all of the corners of these circles, the kind of outside diagonal edges, and then we're going to put one block on each 
side here. Draw another circle, this time without the diagonals, so we've just got three blocks there. Fill in the next layer with solid blocks and have slabs on the four sides leading up to that. Then we'll have a plus shape on top with a dent in the center so that we can build some sort of spire. Once again, we'll go to stone brick walls for this since we don't have a pure stone wall. Put another stone block there, add that, and maybe we'll go with uh, an iron bar on the top of it like so. And from below, that looks pretty good. We could still do a little bit more ornamentation around the outside, maybe put some walls in these little recesses here. And from there, I like the idea of adding iron bars that kind of connect to the blocks on either side. We could even spike those iron bars up here at the corners directly above the wall. There we go. That's a good shape. That's looking ornamented. That's looking fancy. I like it. And it does stand out next to the mansard roofs has enough detail in there whilst still being a slightly simpler footprint. Also, by this point, if you haven't lit up the inside, if you're building this in survival, good luck. <laughs> this thing's about to become a mob farm. But with that, we've been able to make a very interestingly shaped build, something that really fits together and feels like all of the pieces are cohesive whilst only using a very minimal color palette here. We're only really using grayscale stuff, and the majority of it is our mission statement built using stone. And I missed a couple of blocks here and there just to close off the interior. There we go. But now we're done with the outside shape. Now we're happy with that, and I am really happy with this actually. We need to decide on what the textures are going to be, which materials we're going to use for each of the sections of the build. And honestly, I could do a whole separate episode just texturing and retexturing this build a few more times to give you a few examples. But I'm going to try my best to do something which is going to be relatively survival friendly. We're not going to use materials that are too fancy. We're not going to go absolutely overboard with texture. We're just going to use some nice solid colors which will still accentuate the shapes that we've put together here whilst applying some actual texture to them and not expecting you to live in a giant stone monolith. You might also want to get familiar with the clone command so that you can duplicate a build several times or if your build is like this one slightly too large to use the clone command on it then consider taking a backup of your world so that you can go back to this as a template and try out a bunch of different textures regardless of what happens with your original. Here's one example of how we can take texture the mansard roof, just using some of the dark oak planks and stairs, a bit of cyan terracotta and the dark prismarine around the top. Haven't changed anything else about the build so far and have only just textured this section, but I think that looks pretty good. And so by slowly swapping out blocks and adding details, changing textures here and there, this whole thing comes together kind of like a paint by numbers drawing if you've ever done one of those. You're just filling in these grey areas with different colours and choosing materials that kind of line up with their neighbouring materials and the materials that are supposed to be used in kind of the same way. I've started experimenting with a couple of things here that I think mostly work. This isn't my finest work, but there is a little bit of variation going on in here. We've got some banners and wool in there for curtains behind this window, which is just set into a stone wall with a couple of walls there for depth on either side. And honestly, just look at this wall here, for example. All I did was add in some stone bricks and polished andesite around the outside to feel like the wall itself had a bit more structure, a bit more support on the sides. And then I added this planter box with a azalea, a flower azalea and some leaves a couple of ferns that's it that's all i did to that wall and it looks like a better part of the structure than it would do if it was just plain stone like on this side for example compare that wall over there to this one here there's not much of a difference there's just enough detail to sell it and that's really all you need right now the sandstone columns kind of stand out in a big way because sandstone is such a bright material compared to the relatively muted colors we're using elsewhere but honestly i don't mind that too much it kind of feels ostentatious and it's not too bad. I was thinking about incorporating some sandstone accents elsewhere in the build, but I don't know if we're going to get around to that. We might just end up doing this. And the prismarine accents from all the dormer windows carried on up into the dome. I'm using deep slate tiles for the trim around here, and I think that looks pretty good. But honestly, if you're pushed for time, you don't want to build all of this detail into something, you could take this approach. Just add a couple of supporting elements, a couple of blocks here and there for detail, and then just add a window box or some 
some kind of like flower planter along one of these even grow a tree like i could just plant an oak sapling here maybe with a couple of solid blocks nearby sometimes you need to put a torch on these things to make sure that they work this is the old b double o method of growing large trees and then once it grows massive oak tree kind of covers up that wall don't need to do any detailing there <laughs> put in a few basic details into this wall and maybe dangle a couple more oak leaves off of the side of here so that it looks like a bit more of a custom tree we could almost get away with not detailing some of that lower wall as well like the tree really does disguise quite a lot or if you want to go a different direction with it you can use a different color palette and the options really open up and this is the version that i'm going to be building on empire's smp in the next episode so uh spoilers <laughs> and enjoy the preview but now having built this and tinkered with the structure a whole bunch i'm pretty confident i can reproduce this in survival guide from memory or at least from a couple of handy screenshots so let's give that a try well, back here in the survival guide world, I've picked out a spot to build our house, and you can kind of see it off in the distance there, but we're going to fly over. I cleared out a bunch of the birch from around this area in the birch forest, and we're going to build our own woodland mansion, I guess. Uh, I've done the first floor already just to get an idea for the layout and how many trees I need to clear and that kind of thing, but it takes up a pretty large footprint, but is still a nice feeling size. And so far all I've been doing is filling in the materials where I can bring two or three different types of blocks with me and we can get a large part of the foundation here done. This is basically just the stone, stone brick and polished andesite going in all around. I've added in a couple of stone blocks here just for markers. We'll replace those with the proper column material later on. And all in all, it's gone very, very quickly so far. And I didn't texture all of the walls in the creative build before I stepped away and started building it here because I figure once we have one or two different wall styles styles that we can go with, maybe just a plain wall and one with a window, we're pretty much just going to do variations on a theme there. It saves time to just have a couple of these in your back pocket that you can pull out and use for any of the walls of the structure, and since they're all seven blocks wide, we can just alternate between them or just stick windows where we want to have a nice view of an opposite hillside. The five block wide section here on the back wall is just one of the seven block wide sections brought in by one block. It's really quite simple. But at this point, I may need to bust out the scaffolding because we're going to need to build the second floor next. The second floor is going in and this is taking shape for real. It's really nice actually seeing all of this finally come to fruition in a survival world. And once again, the fact that we built this beforehand in creative means it's pretty straightforward to build. Something this size would probably take me a lot longer to freestyle in survival and I feel like I'd probably get some of the measurements off or do stuff asymmetrical, bite off a bit more than I could chew. The roof would definitely be the hardest part. I'm about to add the roof on now so let's see how quickly we can get that done. And with the roof on, a couple of adjustments to the window shapes here and there to create like a lovely arched window above our dark oak and glazed terracotta design. I think the exterior of this is basically done. Obviously, it needs a few more leaves around the outside, a little bit more like organized greenery, some topiary with those azalea and moss bushes that we added. But I think this place looks really nice over here. Could definitely do with a, a few more houses around to blend it in with the landscape. But the fact is, we designed all of this based on shape and we can still see all of the shape in here. The texture has not diminished the overall impression. In fact, it's accented some of the features of the build that I really like a lot. And of course, we haven't done a great deal with the interior yet. In fact, the interior is just lit up to make sure mobs don't spawn. And I have still seen a couple of creepers spawning up on those ledges here and there. But overall, I think the interior is pretty clean. And that's good because that gives you a nice blank canvas to work on the interior yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed a look at this build coming together in creation and rebuilding it here in survival really didn't take all that long at all. You can also see me rebuild this in survival in my next Empire's SMP episode where we're going to be adding a slightly different skin to the entire thing and making it look like part of the empire I'm building over there. Kind of ruined architecture, copper roofs, that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to that and hopefully you folks are too, but that's where we're going to leave this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, bye for now.